quando se fala em drones, muita gente pensa logo no, na diversão ou de repente numa câmera diferente ou até mesmo como a Amazon, a entrega de algum pacote, algum produto. Mas esse cara aqui ao meu lado, o Christian Sanz, foi além. A empresa dele, SkyCat, desenvolve drones para diversos setores, você vai entender um pouco mais agora. Christian, first of all, thanks for talking to us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Well, we're just we're just talking before recording about uh, drone games. What was that? That's right. We're really into drone things forever, right? Yeah, since before it, it got popular. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a hackathon um, named NoCopter, uh, where you know developers. It was underground. Developers were basically developing customization of the AR drone to do fun stuff like you know spread viruses, like you mentioned earlier, or swarm swarm flights every, you know all the drones flying at once and um and uh and they were a lot of fun they were all over the world but then i uh i wanted to turn that into a competition uh -huh. and that was drone games and that got really big it was on cnn TechCrunch. uh we got people from facebook twitter competing against each other and it was all who based won? Yeah? who won actually the guy who won is the guy who actually runs the team for software oh, sure. <laughs> right. yeah of course he's that He, he used to work at Twitter, uh -huh. and he actually won the event, and he's now working for us. Yeah. How was his drone? Uh, well, he, it, he built a drone that, and he actually added computer vision to the whole stack, so it basically follows his hand all around. It's much easier to, to, to yeah. handle yeah. with a drone like exactly, that, right? Exactly, yeah. And you can actually, you can see videos of him on YouTube and stuff. Okay. At first, you're focused on the software side of it, right? So when did you realize you could like, earn money with drones? Um, I, I was actually very skeptical about the industry initially. I thought this was a lot of fun. It was great to develop against and create these, these machines. And then most importantly, it was a lot of fun to, uh, to make them do fun things, right? That are, you know. Just like a hobby. It's a hobby, yeah. yeah. And I, uh, I was honestly, um, I didn't really see exactly how this could be useful right away. And so, um, I thought agriculture was interesting, but I also thought that agriculture doesn't change a lot. Right. So crops don't change every day, so it changes maybe every month. So the need for an ongoing flight is not very high, mm -hmm. which doesn't create the opportunity for like massive sales. Right. So after a lot of conversation and obviously my, my desire to work on the data side of things uh, drove me to really literally just go around. I picked up a truck and loaded it up with drones and it just drove around. I went to construction sites, mining companies, and um, started to explore what areas where a lot of big physical things moving around could potentially use a new, a new angle of visibility. And um, construction was the one area that really caught my attention. Um, not only, uh, and it, this was actually an advice from one of our investors early on, who was actually an advisor. He's like, hey, you know, why don't you go check out construction sites? Mm -hmm. And uh, when, I, when I visited a couple of construction sites here in the valley, I've noticed a lot of people were taking photos with their iPhones. Uh -huh. Every single, yeah. like, why not? why not use the drone? Uh -huh. and, uh, and then I just started to buy equipment and I bought a hard hat, a vest, and I literally just started showing up to construction sites. I wasn't sold on the idea yet. It wasn't until I started to do these like free flights for some of these job sites, and I started getting a lot of requests. And in some, air, in some, in some places, I used to get kicked out. <laughs> and in other areas, they basically got very picky and demanding about how quickly I was able to give them their photos. Right. And, um, and there were simple requests from, hey, can you give me a photo of the side of the, ang of side of the building all the way around while they're putting the panels and then get another photo at four o'clock so I can see the difference mm -hmm. between the two oh. so I can package that up and send it to the owners, you know. Or get, I used to get photo requests for the stockpiles. At 12 o'clock, as soon as we get the new order, I want to see a stockpile photo so we can have record, a recording, um, you know, photo of it. Uh, or at th two o'clock, I want a, a top-down photo of the entire back area so that we can start laying down the foundation and start moving people in that direction. And it got to a point where I couldn't keep up mm -hmm. with a lot of these requests. And two months into it, I, um, I stopped doing com some of these job sites and they came to me and they asked me, hey, can we buy whatever you're doing? And I had, a, it was a complete hack. Uh -huh. 
it was like 10 different scripts, one for removing blurry images, one for uploading. So I couldn't really package it up and uh -huh. sell it. And in all honesty, I have no idea what to charge them either. Mm -hmm. So I came up with a big number. I went back to them and uh, they came back saying, wow, that's cheap. And I was like, wow, you know, that's the down payment. Uh -huh. <laughs> Just kidding. And then, um, and then I ended up uh, using that interaction to go out and seek funding. Yeah. And in less than a month, I had closed the first $750,000 uh, seed funding, yeah. How big is Skycatch nowadays? So we have, to date, we've raised $45 million. Uh, we have 60 plus people, mostly engineers, and we're working with some of the biggest companies in construction in the world. And we have headquarters here in Sacramento, in Guadalajara. So we have an office here. Uh, uh -huh. We have our manufacturing. This is our headquarters. Our manufacturing and design prototyping happens in um, Sacramento. Mm -hmm. And then we have a small office of, engineering, of engineers down in Guadalajara. Mm -hmm. So that's your, your son? That's my son, exactly. <laughs> that. I gave birth to that. I don't uh -huh. know how, but you know, it came out of me. Explain yeah. that to, uh, to us. What, what, well, it's like, like a drone, like any other drone, but it has specifically, uh, some specific things, right? You have a battery there with a storage. Mm -hmm. Explain that to us. So um, everyone's seen quadcopters before. You have mm -hmm. four motors. Uh, inside you have a board. You have speed controllers for controlling the motors. You have a battery that's connected to the board. Um, and then you have a receiver and transmitter for sending the commands back and forth. That people are seeing now, we're going to make some, some exactly. footage of that. Exactly, yeah. And there's inside you have accelerometers, you know, barometers, all these different sensors that are making this possible. Mm -hmm. it, you know, and the, the funny thing about this is that none of this would be possible today if it wasn't for the phone industry, uh, the smartphone industry. The smartphone industry made all these different what used to be very expensive sensors, like gyros used to be extremely expensive. Mm -hmm. They're no longer, they're like five cents. Yeah. So now we can actually build these things. Cool. Yeah. And uh, how does it really work? Like if you're on a campus, uh, if you're, you have uh, a base and then, so how, how autonomous it is? This one is, w what we build is fully autonomous, mainly because during the early days of doing this, I realized that I couldn't keep up. The f doing the flights. Um, so it made sense for us to build something that basically was completely autonomous. There's no manual or human intervention uh, so that you can have five of these things flying at, at the same time and collecting as much data as possible. What we learned early on working with all these different clients is that as soon as you give them a little bit of data, they start asking for more uh -huh. and more and more. It's There's just, no limits for it's just that. like yeah. humans love data. <laughs> and especially if the data is giving you entertainment or it's giving you value that you make, make you better. Actually, but you also have some pilots as well for the drones, right? Right. How, do you, how are they uh, contracted? How, how do you find them or how do you train them? Train them? Yeah. So we do work with, we have the, the fully autonomous part of the business and then we have the consulting part of the business, which basically uh, works with companies like Bechtel, and they basically go to job sites, do manual flights, because we don't know which angles they want to take, mm -hmm. uh, how often, how slow, how close to the ground, because that changes the, the accuracy of the, of the image. So we work with clients um, and as consultants to figure out exactly what is the algorithm or what is the pattern of flight time that you, wanna, uh, you want the, the robot to do, uh -huh. but we do it manually. Okay. And then we, we extract all of that information and then we turn that into a plan for, okay, this is how you can actually optimize your workflow mm -hmm. using this new data set. Okay, uh, but uh, to, to pilot a drone, mm -hmm. do you need to have like a special license or? Yeah, so today- so like to take a driver's license yeah, to? Well, we, that's, what we're, that's what we're shooting for. Uh, but today, all of our pilots are our commercial pilots. In fact, the guy who manages our, our flight operations, he used to be a Harrier pilot in the US military. Now, now we're going towards um, removing the complexity of having to have a commercial, because there's no need to fly a real airplane to be able to fly yeah, this. this one, yeah. there's, no, there's no reason for that. So the FAA is becoming more flexible when it comes to you just getting a, basically a driver's uh -huh. license for this. Uh -huh. Yeah. How do you see the future for that? Like you said, uh, 
the regulations and the rules about that. How, how is it like here in, in the U.S. nowadays? Or what uh, do you think is going to be? The process of evolving the regulatory environment, not only here in the U.S., but worldwide, will come to, you know, side by side with the maturity of the market. How quickly is the market, are these companies going to mature to a point where they find a real use case that adds value to their, to their, to their overall flow or way of managing things? And then how does it work? Like it goes down to the base so, and then automatically it comes right. out? So what happens is in, in the computer, we, send, we create a path for, for the, an area that we're interested in. Is we call it area of interest. So we say this is an area of interest. If you look at this map right here, once we select the area of interest, we say, okay, go collect the data. That goes out to the cloud. Mm -hmm. This then collects data from the cloud, instructions from the cloud. Mm -hmm. As soon as it gets that, the UAV takes off, um, flies the pattern mm -hmm. to go and take photos above that area. This one, for instance, it collects close to maybe a thousand photos. And those photos, as soon as it lands, it starts, he starts sending those photos out to the cloud. Mm -hmm. And also recharging the battery or changing it, the recharging battery. Recharging the battery or changing the battery, uh -huh. right. So while it's doing that, then the cloud is basically processing all of those images. Uh -huh. So optimizing them, removing the blurry images, and then creating 3D models using the overlap um, you know, photos, 2D photos. And then it turns it into a 3D model. You get a notification, uh, it says, you know, the job, the, you know, the, the job is done with a link to our dashboard tools. And then you click on it and you can start playing around with the actual imagery. How is the platform, like the software layer on it? So, so again, so we have, we have the, the UAV that captures the imagery. Uh, then we have a pipeline where we actually send all of the images to the cloud. It goes through our processing pipeline that turns it into a 3D model. And then we have our 3D modeling tools for extracting information from that 3D model. For instance, we can extract volumes from each of those stocks, whether it's wood, whether it's a stockpile of cement, we're able to, or, or sand, we're able to extract the value. And that actually uh, means a lot for people in construction. It's how much you get paid, you know, if you deliver enough material in order for you actually to do, the, do your job. All right, so Christian, thank you very much for talking to us. It's a great idea. Congratulations for that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.